It's going to be really cool. We've got it all planned. She'll walk in and I'll be sitting there and I'll say, hey, Mitchie. She's going to be so surprised. Hey, Mitchie, that's your big line. Trust me, everything's cool when I do it. I'm just excited to finally spend some time with her. Here you go. Is this from the tire? Yeah, I saw it laying on the ground before. I thought it was important, so I put it in my pocket. Why didn't you tell me about this earlier? How could I have told you if I didn't remember until now? And then their bus falls into a pit. (laughs) (laughs) All the special effects in this movie. And that was probably the most expensive one. (laughs) I was I literally wrote, did they blow the whole budget budget on on that one? Hey, Val. Hey, Al. Hey, Zach. Hey, Val and Al. Welcome to D-Commentaries. Thank you. Welcome to you. Welcome to our listeners. And welcome to our very special returning guest, Zach. Yay! Oh, yay. Oh, I'm so happy to be here again. <laughs> We're so happy to have you back. Uh, Zach, what's been going on with you since we last saw you? Oh my gosh. Um, let's see. Uh, I got my ears pierced. You did um, do that. I did. I did do that. Oh yeah. Wait, hold on. Wait. Yeah. Look, look at that. Oh, that right there. Yeah. A whole, a whole stud. I love a pierced um, ear. Yeah. Oh, God, I'm, you're so hot. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, speaking of, I'm uh, continuing my health journey. I've, uh, I've been trying to trim down a little bit, a little Ooh. bit successfully. I've been, I went to, um, an ear, nose, and throat doctor, just doing some real grown-up things. Wow. wow. Yeah. Trying to trying to knock out that deviated septum, really just doing some <laughs> renovation up in there. That's huge. You're gonna breathe. <laughs> I'm gonna breathe. <laughs> First I fixed my eyes, now I'm gonna fix my nose. Ooh. 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 Well, that's all sounds great. And we're glad to have you back. And folks, the reason Zach is back is because Camp Rock is also back. We're talking about Camp Rock 2. Woohoo! To think, Camp 2 Rock. Yeah. To, I was, I was going to call it that. There, there is actually like a subtitle, but I've already forgotten it. The Final Jam. The Final Jam. <laughs> the Final Jam. <laughs> Very cool. Um, well... Folks, I mean, we can just dive right in unless there's anything else you want to chit chat about. Oh, no, sure. Zach, Let's do you do need it. to legally say that your opinions oh, don't yes. reflect that oh, of the Walt my, Disney Company? <laughs> my favorite spell. Yes. Oh, gosh. I, I forgot. Oh, wait. What did I say last time? Um, mm-hmm. uh, I, My thoughts and opinions are, are my own, and they do not reflect those of the Walt Disney Company. There you go. X O X O. <laughs> amazing so we're all safe now no one's gonna sue us uh so yeah. let's begin the business sure. okay camp rock 2 came out or camp rock, i'm sorry camp rock 2 the final jam uh came out <laughs> september 3rd 2010 it had a superstar uh crew here behind the scenes uh directed by paul hohen who you might remember from look at the irish true confessions you wish eddie's million dollar cook-off read it and weep cheetah girls one world dad napped how to build a, build a better boy and zombies one through three so wow. oh. we've already had a big history with him and we still have more to come shout out to paul hohen yeah doing the work the mm-hmm. writing team is also familiar uh, first up, Dan Berenson. There he is. Yep. Dan wrote Up, Up, and Away, Scream Team, Eddie's Million Dollar Cook-Off, Stuck in the Suburbs, Halloween Town High, Twitches and Twitches 2, as well as mm. the Hannah Montana movie, Wizards of Waz- Waverly Place movie, Cheetah Girls One World, and Sabrina the Teenage Witch episodes. Um, <laughs> which- <laughs> Sabrina the Te- Was there a Sabrina the Teenage Witch movie and I missed it? <laughs> <laughs> episodes. Um, <laughs> then we have uh, Regina Y. Hicks, um, who wrote for Sister Sister, but also wrote, mm. in terms of DCOMs, wrote Jump In, was one of the writers on Camp Rock, um, and then was the showrunner on two different shows, The Upshaws and Central Park. 
Oh. Did she play Dila Duke in the first one? No, that writer is not not involved <gasps> this time. Not Dila Duke. I have a justice for Dila Duke. <laughs> justice. <laughs> they for pretended Dila Duke. that Dila Duke did not exist. <laughs> they Zach, sure did. Zach, if you ever do drag, you just need to be oh. Dila Duke. <laughs> I, I will that. take that challenge. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. I know you're a, a Drag Race fan. <laughs> and then finally, we have Karen Gist, who also wrote Jump In um, and Camp Rock and for a show called Girlfriends, which I didn't mention, but Regina also did that one. And mm. then she was the showrunner on Mixed Dish, Our Kind of People and Mike. So mm. very strong writing team and like strong in decoms and strong in general. Um, so, you know, just power hitters all around. Yeah. And then we have a pretty long cast. So I'll try to be as quick as possible because most of them are reprising their roles. Mm -hmm. uh, we have Demi Lovato as Mitchy Torres, along with being in Camp Rock, too. She got her start in Barney and Friends, but she is mostly a musician. So most of her credits are music videos, although she is a voice on the Smurfs. Uh, Joe Jonas plays uh, Shane Gray again. He was in Camp Rock and the show Jonas, and of course, lots of music videos as well. Uh, Nick Jonas plays Nate, his brother, also was in Camp Rock, also was in Jonas, also was in lots of music videos with the Jonas Brothers. He was in more stuff. He was in Smash, Scream Queens, Kingdom, Midway, and Jumanji 2. Uh, Kevin Jonas plays their brother Jason, and he uh, was also on the Jonas show and also obviously in their music videos. He doesn't have much else on his resume in terms of acting, which is honestly a shame because he's hilarious. Allison Stoner reprised their role as Caitlin Geller. They were also in Camp Rock, obviously. Uh, they were also in Cheaper by the Dozen, Sweet Life of Zack and Cody, Ghost Time, a voice actor in Kingdom Hearts, which we talked extensively about, or Zach specifically spoke extensively about in our last uh, Camp Rock episode. Uh, they are also a voice on Phineas and Ferb, and they are also a musician, so have a lot of credits in music videos. Uh, Daniel Fathers played Brown Casario, the founder of Camp Rock. He was also on Murdoch Mysteries, a Snatch television show, and is just generally a character actor. Anna Maria Perez de Tagle played Ella Pador, one of the buddies from their cabin. Um, she's in Camp Rock, and she was on Hannah Montana. Jasmine Richard played Margaret Peggy Dupree. Um, you might remember Peggy won the competition at the end of Camp Rock 1. Um, Jasmine was also in Naturally Sadie, Overruled, Redakai, Bomb Girls, but stopped acting in 2013. Hmm. Hmm. Jordan Francis played Baron James, one of their other pals. He was in Da Boom Crew, <laughs> Carl Squared, Connor Undercover, and A Christmas Serenade. Roshan Fagan uh, re reprised his role as Sandra Lawyer, my favorite character name of all time. He was in Camp Rock, obviously. He was in Shake It Up, Greenleaf, and Dragons, Rescue Riders, which I assume was a cartoon. Megan Martin played Tess Tyler again. Uh, she was in Camp Rock. She was in the 10 Things I Hate About You show, Awkward, and was also a voice actor in Kingdom Hearts. Daniel Cash played Axel Turner, a uh, new character, uh, Camp Star's founder, as a matter of fact. Um, he's a character actor. He's been in lots of random things, but nothing of note for a long period of time. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, Chloe Bridges played Dana Turner, his daughter, uh, Nick's uh, love interest in this uh, movie. Uh, she was in something called Freddy. She was in the Character Diaries, Pretty Little Liars, and a show more recently called Maggie, which I had not heard of. Um, Maria Canals Barrera reprised her role as Connie Torres. Um, I'm kind of confused why she was so low on the cast border because she's got a pretty big role in this movie, but I don't know. Yeah. Um, so obviously she was in Camp Rock. One, she was on the Tony Danza show. Uh, she was in Justice League, The Proud Family, Wizards of Waverly Place, and Christella. And finally, uh, Arissa Cox played Georgina Farlow, uh, the newscaster or like the, ho the MC at the end. Um, her only credit on IMDb is Big Brother Canada. Oh, does she, is she the host? What's her name? Arissa Cox. Oh, I literally probably I think I just read about her on. Um, yeah, she was the host of Big Brother Canada, which has now been canceled. But um, this week was the first week that 
Julie Chen in 24 years has never been on a live episode of Big Brother, including when she was like pregnant with her kid. It, he was born like two weeks after later after the season was um, filmed. Like she's never missed a live episode. She missed this week for COVID. Jerry O'Connell filled in and Big Brother Twitter was like, Arissa should have been the one. And everyone's like, how are you going to get her here from Canada so fast? Um <laughs> But that's how I know. I didn't even realize that. That's so funny. That's interesting. Well, she yeah. was in this movie randomly. I, 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 yeah. Obviously, they filmed in Canada. Um, yeah. Because a lot of the other, like, smaller parts, you know, were clearly Canadian character actors. Mm -hmm. um, so they probably just, like, snagged her. Maybe Big Brother was, like, really big at that moment. And so they were like, ooh, fun. Uh, so that's the cast. The synopsis is as follows. Mitchie and her friends, including top rock rock group Connect Three, returned to Camp Rock for another great summer of music, dancing and fun. However, when big money state of the art camp star opens across the lake, it lures away many instructors and campers, putting the future of Camp Rock in jeopardy. That <gasps> is a, a good. OK, perfect synopsis. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Love that. When the movie gets good traction, it gets good synopsis. That's right. <laughs> Very fun. And then finally, fun facts. Uh, Kevin Jonas once received 43 birdhouses in one day by Camp Rock fans. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. Isn't that hilarious? Um, they did bring it back, but it was like a very see it. Or like you could blink and you miss it like joke where he's putting together a birdhouse at one point, but they never yeah. like, say anything out loud, which I thought was great. Mm -hmm. Did um, you see it? It's when he's uh, in the when the he becomes the counselor for right. the, the kids. Yeah. And he's, and like, he's like, hiding. like hiding under the table. Yeah. <laughs> and then so they good. smash it. Yeah, it's very cute. And then I don't know if you saw, but they give him a guitar birdhouse at the end, like in the video <sighs> montage. That's, I was literally oh. OK. I. <sighs> That's what it was. I was like, why does that guitar look weird? It's because it was a guitar birdhouse. That makes sense, too. I had the same thought. Yeah, it was very cute. Um, I also had that thought at the beginning. I was like, why does that look weird? And then I realized yeah. it's a birdhouse. Um, <laughs> Chloe Bridges, who plays Dana, Nick's love interest, was actually up for the part of Mitchie in Camp Rock hmm. 1. I can see it. Yeah. And then finally, mm -hmm. apparently 1,500 fans were invited to be extras in the camp camp stars scene. So I'm assuming mm. they mean at the end. That's really fun. Yeah. 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 So that would Especially be a very special. fun little like I don't know if they had to enter a contest or how it mm -hmm. got chosen, but that is fun that they just had fans be extras. Yeah. So those are the yeah. fun facts about this movie. I would love to hear Zach A <laughs> if you'd ever seen this movie before and B what your first impressions were then if you have and now regardless of whether you have or not <laughs> um no i had never seen this one before I, I had not seen the first one before either um but i have first and second impressions because <laughs> i watched it um uh like two or three nights ago with austin <laughs> okay and uh, we we'd had we'd had some juice oh and so oh, adult <laughs> juice oh. Some ju no no just regular juice just regular, <laughs> regular juice and and so i was like okay let me refresh my memory just to make sure like i remember all of it so i watched it again after work just now and oh. it hit different it hit different the second time oh. and like i was watching the ending just now and be like why am i getting emotional because <laughs> <laughs> Because I walked away from it the first time being like, yeah, it wasn't as good as the first one. And then this time I was watching it like, ah, like, <laughs> uh, like, like, <laughs> like spoiler so city. But like at the end, when they get the devastating news, yeah. like I sat here, like I felt for them. I was Aww. like, ah, uh, like something about like Demi's face yeah. when she's registering tragedy. Yeah. I'm like, yes, <laughs> so, she played that. Um, but, uh, I great great first impressions overall i feel like it was definitely a glow up from the first one mm. i feel like the actors themselves had a nice glow up particularly in the hair department oh. i feel like everyone got the bangs memo except tess um <laughs> she, and, she and, inherited everybody else's bangs she inherited everybody else's bangs <laughs> um well no and like i just i sent you that gif like five minutes ago and looking at shane then compared to now yeah. being like i know like um, Con uh, Connie, like Mitchie's mom, mm -hmm. gorgeous. Her hair. Uh, I don't know why I was so fixated on their hair. Um, 
but yeah, no, I thought it was, I thought it was good. I have other thoughts about like other things, but I, I, I want to say them. Fair. So fair. Yeah. Al. Thanks Val. Um, <laughs> I have seen this before, but it had been a while. Um, and I think it's a lot of fun. I had a good time. Um, I looked and I gave Camp Rock a six and a half. I think I'm also going to give Camp Rock 2 a six and a half. I think they are very similar plane of movie. Mm -hmm. Um, I do think it's funny now with like, there's a lot of TikTok in Camp Rock 2. We've got our um, Camp Rock. Oh, yeah. Camp Rock. And then it's the the one (laughs) song is you, me, face to face, but we don't see eye to eye. Yeah. That was a huge uh, TikTok uh, trend. I think there was one other one, but um, yeah, I liked this movie. I thought it was fun. It was a quick, silly watch. I'd watch it again. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Val, first impressions? Thanks, Al. Uh, yeah, I had obviously not seen this either because I hadn't seen the first one. And first of all, we watched it as a family. So <gasps> literally today, uh, this morning, we all sat down, me, Michael, and Alice, and watched this movie. Michael, not a fan. Alice yeah. <laughs> liked the music and like the energy. Um, okay. She was, you know, she really likes music and like beats. And so she was mm. just kind of like doing this a lot, which was very cute. And uh, I liked it as well. I, I definitely feel like it was kind of in terms of my opinion of it, kind of on par with the first one. Like I enjoyed it, but it wasn't like, wow, this is like the best movie. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah. Or like, I wasn't like surprised that it was like really good or something like that, but it was good. It's It's really really good. It's really good. (laughs) Um, (laughs) I totally did that. The whole time I was Um, waiting. I was waiting for that joke the whole movie. (laughs) Oh, And I will say this, other than the song that Allie just mentioned, I was not a big fan of the music in this Mm -hmm. one. It just didn't really like hit with me, like especially some of the earlier songs, like they just kind of were like, I don't know, not emo. That's not the right word, but they were just kind of like negative to me. And like I, they just didn't catch me at all. Like I was just not into them. It felt like middle schoolers writing a love song. Yes. To me. Yeah. Um, also this is so funny, but because Michael was there, he obviously had commentary and the song where Nick sings to, uh, what's her character's name? Dana. Dana. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Michael just goes, uh, this is I'm yours by Jason Moretz. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think I heard that too. <laughs> I mean, he's not wrong. He's not wrong. Uh, It was so funny. I was like, oh, my God, you're right. Uh, And he wrote like another note like that at some point. I'll probably find it at some point while we're talking. But anyway, um, it was it was good. It was fine. Um, It was fun. I was a little nervous at first because I thought that they were going to like make the conflict be like basically like the woman is choosing her work and passions over the, her mm-hmm. relationship, um, which I'm not a big fan of for obvious yep. reasons. Um, but they handled it well in the end, uh, which I appreciate. Mm-hmm. Um, and I thought it was kind of like, I guess it makes sense that Tess kind of was Tess again. Um, I thought I, I wrote that same note. I was like, okay, we've justified it where she's, she's not really herself again. She's been put in like a new, in the new situation where it's yeah. like, yeah, she would, she would want to go where like the glitz and where like kind of like the glamour right, are. Right. And now she's like face to face with somebody new and competitive who's kind of forcing her to be snotty again. Yeah. Whereas if she had stayed at Camp Rock, she wouldn't have fallen into that trap. Yeah. Again. I think so too. I think like it made sense for her character in the end, I think. Yeah. And like, obviously she has a redemption again at the end. I don't think that's spoiling anything to say that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, th- I thought overall it was, it was good. It was fun. Yeah. 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 It was a good time. Yes. Uh, Zach, do you have any favorite quotes or moments? Oh, gosh. Um, I, our cold open was I, I I really thought after that cold open moment, I was like, oh, I'm going to have tons of these. And then as it went on, I wasn't really writing stuff down. But mm-hmm. when I was rewatching it just now, I was like, oh, that was pretty good. And I would go to write it down and I would be like, you know yeah. what I mean? So it's like definitely I felt like has it, some moments like that. Yep. Yeah, me too. Yeah. I, 
I felt like I was hovering at like a like a 5.9 with like some of those moments where I was like, all right, it was good, but it wasn't good enough for me to write down. Yeah. It was good. Um, it was it was good, not great, not, not your enough. best. Um, I wrote the hair, no bangs except Tess. That's not a favorite quote or moment. That's just an, an observation. Um, Mom, obviously it's something. You and Subtle aren't very good friends. <laughs> That's a good line. I missed that one. Um, how could I have told you about it if I didn't remember until just now? Yep, that's the cold open. Um, <laughs> in the synopsis, I was talking about uh, when they do the the big the the initial like come to our bonfire moment yeah. that like Camp Star has, and the the little um, uh, pods are floating down. And I said, what are what is this Hunger Games nonsense? <laughs> But the the quote from there is like someone ducks and is like, we're under attack. Oh, yeah. like, <laughs> dramatic. Um, there's a moment towards the end where Nate, a.k.a. Nick, uh, just nods at a horse poster. <laughs> mm -hmm. I wrote that down. <laughs> I remember that. Why Fake did horse and barn. <laughs> He's it like, just yeah, I'm going to go get the girl. <laughs> <laughs> exactly the energy I, that feels like he just was like i'm gonna do this and then like they kept can we do room. one take where i talked to the horse and they're like fine nick we need to wrap this up yeah oh my i God. like to think that was the energy yeah that they were bringing i also kind of felt like overall in the whole movie i feel like they were like damn nick is the hot one yeah <laughs> in this movie Not, yeah in this I mean, one i feel like they were the like oh one, i think yeah <laughs> I feel like they were like, oh, darn, we picked the wrong one in the first yeah. one. So. <laughs> well, Nick was yeah, I think I think now, Val, to counter your uh, opinion, I think that Joe is the hottest oh, now. Joe. But I think that Kevin is super hot now. But I think Joe wins first spot now. See, I, mm. I just think I, I think my issue with Joe is like I've always kind of thought he was a little bit of a shit. And so, like, I just kind of <laughs> find him less attractive as a result mm. of that. And had that. Yeah. Kind for of me, confirmed. personality doesn't matter. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> For me, it does. <laughs> Amazing. Any uh, other quotes or moments, uh, Zach? Yeah, that's it. That's all I got for all you. All right. Hit us, Al. Ooh, um, same moment when the pods are coming down with items that Zach mentioned, but the last person, they're like, what's in there? And the kid goes, Graham crackers. <laughs> <laughs> Marshmallows. <laughs> Marshmallows. Yeah. I, I didn't write this down. Graham the, crackers. <laughs> I didn't write this down, but, my, but the mom, when she's like, this is good chocolate. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and I'm not just saying that because I haven't made dessert right. yet. <laughs> <laughs> um, I like, uh, I didn't know that he would come back a lot. So I wrote this down because I thought it was funny. Um, and uh, Kevin is trying to take away one of the campers cameras. And he mm -hmm. goes, you'd think I'm going to drop it in the water. And then he drops the camera in the water and he goes, <laughs> and if you thought that, you'd be right. <laughs> um, but the kid he took the camera from is their real life brother, um, Franklin Jonas, Frankie Jonas. No. Yep. Why mm -hmm. does he look nothing like the rest of them? I think because he's, uh, I don't know, I don't want to speak for their family, but maybe an oops. And so he's a little bit younger. Well, yeah, but it's not just that he's younger. He just doesn't look like them at all. Yeah, um, he definitely looks like them now. Like if you watch Claim to Fame, him and Kevin host Claim to Fame. Mm. Um, and Wait. he had a big TikTok career through the pandemic and then um, left abruptly, I would say. Mm. Um, but yeah, he was in the whole movie, Frankie. Oh, yeah. OK, I see it now. Mm -hmm. I'm looking at so Val missed a guess. Val missed a person, even though there were like 1,800 Sorry. people on the list, so it's okay. <laughs> um, I okay. I'm sorry. Keeping going with the, my my moments and my yeah. quotes. Um, no one has ever written my name on their hand before. I hated that. I know. I was like, um, also, you're famous. I, yeah. Like what? Um, this girl is taking the f u n out of summer. There is no F U N in summer. I wrote exactly. That. <laughs> I wrote that too. So good. Um, uh. and then I hated this line in one of the songs. I'm overthinking in terms of do re mi. Ew. Hated that line. Mm -hmm. Literally was washing dishes, paused, dried my hands, <laughs> went to type on my computer. 
Um, and Ooh. then my favorite moment is when Nick was wearing a fedora. Yeah. They pass that fedora around a lot. Hell yeah. Yeah. A fedora. <laughs> That's funny. Um, yeah. So I thought, you know, a couple fun ones. Val, favorite quotes or moments? Thanks, Al. Uh, I wrote, uh, I also wrote that one about the fun in summer. Oh, I wrote, <laughs> I think I just tied my scarf to my bra. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, at one point, Kevin says to Nick, you think I'm intelligent? And before he even finishes the sentence, Nick goes, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> it was perfectly timed. Like, it was such yeah. a great delivery. Uh, uh, that's it. Um, wow. Val did then, not like this movie. <laughs> no, no, no. That's no. I just there wasn't a lot of like I kind of to Zach's point, like. They're, considering the writing team, there just what weren't a lot of like zingers. Like it was, it yeah. was fine all the way through, but it never like peaked, you know, like to the point where I was like, "Ooh, I want to write that down." Um, it was just kind of like fine the entire time. It felt yeah. really song heavy too. Oh, yeah. what absolutely it was song heavy. Um, like my last like three notes are just writing the songs down that they were singing. Yeah. Like the, there was nothing else going on. Um. And then as far as favorite moments, I, I so one thing I did kind of appreciate about this movie. Is, so I went to camp for years, like went to and then worked at a camp for a total of 13 years. And yeah. yes, me, if you didn't know that. Um, and I should have worn my camp stuff, but I didn't think of it. Um, but like this, the idea of a bunch of teenagers like running a camp it seems yes. silly but it is 100 exactly accurate. what happened like like our camp like the when i was an administrator like i was like the third like most like high level person at our camp the oldest that i was in that position was 23 years old yeah or no 24 years old that is the oldest that i was in that job um like i was some kind of administrator from the age of 19 and I was a counselor from the age of well I was a CIT at 16 and I was like a full-blown counselor like allowed to be left alone with children at 17 so like the, you know the, the idea that this camp is being run by these teenagers is 100% accurate and I just yeah. I was like I feel this so hard <laughs> Like all they needed were walkie talkies and it would be like exactly what my experience was. Of my yeah. Camp. Yeah. Um, Zach, yeah. we might have talked about this on, on our first one. And I forgot. Did you ever go to camp? I did not. No, no. never camp. I mean, I went to like drama camp, but it was, it was like a day camp. It was like, I got dropped off at a building and mm -hmm. then picked up at the end of the day. Not like a mm -hmm. camp camp. Fair. Yeah. Fair. There were no Explains graham crackers. There were no graham crackers. <laughs> My mom dropped me off at the buses uh, and I heard tires screech and then I didn't see her for eight weeks. <laughs> wow, you did legit camp. Oh. I did legit camp from age 11. And I was old wow. to be starting too. Like most of the kids had started at like eight, nine. Yeah. Yeah. I went to sleepaway camp one time, five days. It was a Jesus sports camp. So we played a lot of sports. Um, <laughs> And Val laughs because she went to Jewish camp. <laughs> no, it, there were just a lot of Jews. Jewish I people there. I think it's very foreign to Christian parents to send their kids away for that long. Yeah, I think that is a fair statement. Um, yeah. But I uh, purposefully did not shit the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> there Act are kids choice. that do that for like whole sessions. It's a problem. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <sighs> well, that's fine. Um, and then you go to college and live in a communal dorm and all all bets are off. Yep. Um, and now, you know what, guys? I can shit anywhere. <laughs> well, our like a lot of times You're when kids would have issues with pooping, their counselors would create a poop chart to like make it a competition. Honestly, and would have loved they that. would participate in it. So then everyone was like trying to poop more. It was very funny. <laughs> this, is, this is I'm. I've never heard of this. This is, <laughs> this is all new and exciting to me. <laughs> oh, oh. I love girls camp. <laughs> there, anything goes. Oh, and that's the other funny thing about this movie that isn't realistic at all mm. is 
like the little junior rockers, like there were boys and girls just like in a cabin together, which like I oh, yeah. think is like very would be like a very like totally fine in reality concept for like a bunch of eight year olds. But like no sure. one would ever allow that to happen ever. Yeah. Right. Um, And I feel like that only leads to more problems down the line. <laughs> so true. <laughs> well, whatever. Um, Cool. Well, those are my uh, favorite quotes moments. Um, anything else? I did have. Oh, yes. I had one Zach. more. Yes, please. <laughs> I, need to cut. I had a one more. <laughs> um, He's not laughing. Every- he can't get through it. <laughs> not everything in life is a competition, but I think I just won. Oh. oh. oh wow. When uh, Dana said that about Nick at the end. Mm-hmm. I thought it was very sweet. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Tell my I like, I knew I had to say more. that in my proposal. <laughs> in the it. words after, of camp rock too <laughs> like, a, a, after she says yes hit her with this one she's gonna love it you me face to face <laughs> she rated this movie a 6.5 she'll go nuts <laughs> oh, no, great, great, good. oh this is good <laughs> this is good yes make note shoot graham crackers out of t-shirt gun at al's <laughs> proposal <laughs> yes okay. um, uh, amazing all right anything else before we hop on into spoiler city no, no. i'm right. riding a canoe top is off Ooh, Ooh. i also will canoe topless with you <gasps> zach what are you doing at camp topless Oh gosh. Um, I am, I mean, my top's off all the time, you know, yeah, every so time true. I go swimming. So I'm just wearing a very, uh, high, high rise instead of a low rise, high rise, uh, tight fitting swim trunks. We're Ooh. showing lot, lots of thigh. Okay. Wow. It's giving like no. 1950s. <laughs> like 1950s. Yeah. We're not all the way to speedo, but we're like, we're very, mm. we're very immodest. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Immodest. Yeah. But also but still classy. Wow. And that's the yeah. life of Zach Roberts. <laughs> Immodest, but I mean, classy. <laughs> Immodest, but classy. I mean, look at this shirt. Look, I've got neon. I got, I, love I, got, I got, I got, I got, I got juice. You I got, got juice. juice. <laughs> you got juice on there? I got juice on there. <laughs> oh, cute. Wow. All right, Zach. Well, um, as you know, mm. I didn't take notes because we have a guest today. So this is all yep. yours. This Here we go. You. Well, and I just want to preface this by saying that I wrote these notes while drinking juice. <laughs> so can't wait. I feel good about it. Okay. Yeah. We're we're gonna have a great time. Yes. Yeah. 100 <laughs> percent All right. All right. So let's right. talk. Let's talk about Camp Rock 2, the final campening. Um <laughs> Uh, so, uh, we open, uh, lights up on Mitchie and her mom. They're driving like crazy people up the road and Mitchie's all like, turn here, turn here. As if they've never been to this place before. (laughs) Also they're, they're driving this itty bitty, like little beetle Volkswagen type van situation. And then last time it was like the, like the Mm -hmm. giant catering van. So like, I don't know, inconsistency. Uh, Cause I'm assuming it's the same situation again, Mm -hmm. where Connie is catering. Yes. yes. I digress. See, I'm already off topic. Um, uh, But uh, the, on their way uh, they're talking and um, Connie's like, okay, I just don't want you to get your hopes up because yeah, you've been texting Shane every day, but you haven't seen each other in almost a year. I just don't want you to get your hopes up. And Mitchie's like, mom, Oh, wait a second. What's that sign over there? And there's a sign that says camp star. (gasps) They've opened another summer camp directly across the lake from camp rock. What is that? That's so weird, but it doesn't matter because we're at, camp rock and we're reuniting with our friends uh so we get out of the van and the first thing the first person we see is caitlin and they're like oh wow we're here early i guess that means we get to pick the first but oh but they go inside of the cabin and all of their friends are there it's tess and peggy and the one whose name i can't remember ella (laughs) and they all say hi and they're so excited to see each other and they're like, oh, we've got to we've got to come up with our first song that we're going to sing at the opening night jam. And they're like, oh, we just got to we can't think of something. And then they do because that's how these movies work. And then they all start singing about their talents and how they're so excited to be here. And um, I think somewhere in here, 
we cut to the Joe Bros and their van. Oh, yeah. And that's where we have our cold open. Yep. And uh, uh, they're a little bit delayed. They haven't quite gotten there yet. Um, but at some point during the song, that's when they show up. I want to say yes. Uh, I think actually the song comes after the bus crash. Oh, is that what it is? I, at least yes. based on my notes. No, I think you're right. I think you're right. Yes. So we 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 cut to them. They're a little bit delayed getting there. Shane has the same feelings as Mitchie where he's like, oh, man, I can't wait to get there and hit her with the hey, Mitchie, what's up? <laughs> so he's like oh, the whole reason they are coming here to Camp Rock is not to help out or anything. They are coming just so Shane can spend more time with Mitchie. Um, and then that's when they start talking about like the songs that they're going to do. Um, and, uh, that's when our bros show up and they have this awkward little reunion for like a split second, but nobody has time to appreciate anything because that's when camp star shows up on their fancy jet skis and their hoity toity hunger games parachutes, <laughs> ah, graham crackers. <laughs> uh, and it's a ploy to invite them across the lake for a quote unquote bonfire. Mm. Mm -hmm. Um, so, um, uncle Brown is like, I don't like this. I don't like this. I don't think you kids should be going over there. I don't like this. Yeah. He's not stuff. British. He's <laughs> from Staten Island. <laughs> <laughs> right. And I've always said that. Um, and, um, uh, but all of that, Connie is even like, I think that we should, let's see what happens. We're going to see it's going to be fine. Um, so everybody goes over to the quote unquote bonfire, except it's not a bonfire. It was a clever ploy to lure the Camp Rock gang over there to intimidate them with a display of, Bleh, look at us, we've got money and a fancy stage and special effects and air conditioned cabins. <laughs> um, and uh, Axel, what's, what's his name? Axel Turner who we find out was a former bandmate of Uncle Brown, he says, <gasps> correct, dramatic reveal. <laughs> he says, all right, like I've got a proposition for everybody. Uh, anyone, any camp counselors who want to leave Camp Rock and come to my camp is more than welcome to. And at first everybody's like, eh. And then he's like, we pay more and we have air conditioned cabins. And suddenly everyone's jumping out of their seats, climbing over, trying to get over. And he goes, oh, and this offer is extended to the campers as well. Tess volunteers to leave Camp Rock and go over there. And so, you know, Mitchie, our main characters, everyone's like, ah, this is this is the worst. We better get out of here. So they go back to Camp Rock. And I think the only other notable thing is we meet Luke Williams, who and we meet also a fame. And we meet Dana. Oh, and we meet Dana. Thank you. Yes, because during that intimidating performance that they did, Dana's bracelet flies off and hits Nick in the face. And if you look in the crowd, there's no way that from where she was on the keyboard and where he was sitting in the crowd, that that bracelet would have actually hit him. <laughs> yeah, but it was a proto Taylor Swift moment. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Camp Rock 2 invented friendship bracelets. Sure yeah, did. Oh, also, um, in that lighting when it was really, really dark, I thought she kind of looked like Margot Robbie. So I wrote that her name was Margaret Robbie. Amazing. Um, <laughs> but uh, Nate has this little flirty moment with her when he goes to return the bracelet. So I think that's the only important other thing. I did have a little note. I feel like everyone's being respectful of everyone's like boundaries. Mm -hmm. But then later on in the movie, it's revealed that, oh, he's just bad at showing his feelings. He's not flirting with her because he's noivous, <laughs> not because he's respectful. Also, I thought it was so funny that the problem that Nick has in this is that he doesn't talk about himself when uh -huh. I, I think if you asked like 95 percent of women who date men would say their number one complaint is that all men do is talk about themselves on dates and never ask the women anything about themselves. Yeah, I thought if that only was such a ridiculous uh problem that they had that nick wouldn't tell her anything about himself if only they'd flipped it right exactly. Oy vey. Oy vey. <laughs> well if you can't say it you can sing it. Of course. And is that when he nods at the horse? I don't know. Or, uh, <laughs> yeah, like that. it is. You were right. Um, <laughs> let's see. Uh, okay, so the next day, uh, Brown calls everyone into the mess hall and announced that Camp Rock has to close. He says, <gasps> uh, the good... <gasps> 
<laughs> yeah, devastating. Uh, he says the good news is that not very many campers left, but all of the camp counselors did. Uh, and he's like, we don't have enough people to run the camp. So, oy vey, sorry about it. I'm going to start calling all of your parents. So he leaves to go do that. And I don't know how many parents he made it through while Mitchie was singing her We Won't Back Down song. <laughs> We won't, I, the, we won't back down. I hate that song. And this is this was probably back in the day before like unlimited roaming was a thing. So like those parents, they were already in the car, already on their way. <laughs> yeah. They're like, please keep my kid. I don't want to turn around. Um, Something that I noticed starting with this scene when they sing We Won't Back Down. I is, hope you're gonna point out the same thing I was gonna say. I don't know if I am, but um they really struggled with the amount of extras this oh, okay this movie interesting and they were like we're trying to make it look like we got a lot of people and then you can clearly see like a line where it's like <laughs> not a lot of people mm -hmm. i don't know it, every every group scene i was like there's like 10 of you yeah <laughs> no they were really going for this like um I don't know what you would call it, like the elevated camera on like the crane. They were, oh, oh if we yes. film it from up higher, it'll look like there's more people. And yeah, it'll look yes. like we've got a, between that and everyone's hair, it'll look <laughs> like we've got a bigger budget. But they blew um, the and, budget on the bus. But they blew the budget on the <laughs> they bus. They blew the budget on the bus. <laughs> and, and it was between that. And, and truly, I felt like the choreography was better, or at least it was more intense. And I think that all of the actors just had more confidence. Yeah. Um, what I wanted to point out in this scene, I pointed it out specifically here, but I want to know y'all's thoughts. And I, I want to kind of go back to comparing Camp Rock to High School Musical. Mm. I think that here, Camp Rock 2 has an inconsistency with Camp Rock 1. Because Camp Rock 1 isn't a musical. Right. It is a movie about children who have rehearsed songs mm -hmm. and we are seeing them perform yes. them. Yes. Oh. There are... Oh. Yes. There are one or two moments where it feels like everyone picks up on the choreography really quick, but it's believable enough. Mm -hmm. And then starting with this scene. And I mean, I guess even the scene before it, yeah, that the, opening the number. Brand new day. Yeah. It's it was a that musical. brand new day. It was yeah. a, it's a musical. Yes. It, we have gone from being a practical yes. thing to be like, no, no, we're, we have transitioned into the realm of musical. Yes. And I just thought that was neat. Yeah. That's a that's really a, good that's observation. That's a great observation. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So I'm not crazy. Y'all noticed that no, too. Yeah. 100%. I mean, you are crazy, but, um, <laughs> but, but your, your opinion is correct. You're correct. Yeah. <laughs> um, so uh, we have the solution. All of our main characters are going to become camp counselors. And here is where I started. Do you remember when we watched Camp Rock 1? And I said, oh, I've figured it out. It's basically Mean Girls meets The Little Mermaid meets, and I figured out all of the tropes that they were doing. So the same thing happened here. Camp Rock 2 is uh, the Country Bears, the movie. <laughs> We've got to save Country Music Hall. <laughs> So it's the Country Bears meets Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix. <laughs> oh my God. Meets Romeo and Juliet. Oh. Val loves wow. taking movies and being wow. and and comparing them to other movies. So yes. I know she is, is she is very happy right now. That is impressive. Yeah. That Val, have you ever seen the Country Bears movie? <laughs> no, I have not. The Maybe story. we should do a have you seen the Country <laughs> Bears movie. <laughs> Also, I thought I thought that was a decom for the longest time, but oh, I don't. Zach, don't I, insult I'm really decoms. <laughs> uh, I, here's where I, I said I wrote all of our main characters just became camp counselors. Also, there are literal children this year. Nice yes, touch. Yes. Um, love that all of the Joe Bros are getting more involved because this was when we had the scene of Jason going inside of the thing, and I was like, okay, wait they're all actively involved. If anything, I feel like Shane had the least to do with the plot. Because really, his, his only purpose was to be like, uh, Mitchy, spend more time with right. me. I <laughs> miss you. <laughs> yeah. I miss you. <laughs> uh, which was, you know, fair. I don't know. Every, everybody's feelings are valid. It's fine. <laughs> um, montage. All of the main characters are finding their strengths, which I thought they were trying to be like, oh, I'm not good at teaching this class. Maybe I should teach another one. They just couldn't find them. Yeah. Upon a second watch, I realized they were just lost. This is where the juice 
um oh i wrote uh, that a uh, gap between the grown-up actors and the teenage actors seems to have lessened i really i felt like everybody just had really yeah. good chemistry yeah um nate keeps sneaking away to lifeguard but he's really just trying to see dana from afar and by from afar you probably think i mean from far away no he was pretty close to her but she was like 500 feet in the air <laughs> next to the lake for some reason suspended <laughs> on a freaking metal platform just playing the piano outside just because and at first i was like baby girl why are you out there playing the piano by yourself and then in another scene she had five people huddled around her on that tiny little platform and i said that's unsafe does osha know about this <laughs> I, I have lots did. <laughs> I have lots of questions. Um, so everyone's finding their confidence. They're feel oh oh um, uh, while Nate is trying to watch her, uh, he ends up canoeing over to get closer. And uh, uh, the other fellas uh, who are the recreation activities, they accidentally swoosh him over, and he washes up on the Camp Star shore and gets another opportunity to talk to Dana. Ah, but and that's where we have the conversation. Um where she had written his name on her arm, which I thought was weird. Um, but we ha he's like, you know, she's giving him a lot in the conversation. He's like, yeah, that's cool. Um, but he has to hide under the boat because her dad, the camp count, the, the camp guy for Camp Star yeah. comes by. Axel. So he has to hide from her. Ax yeah. Axel, Ax I keep wanting to say Axel Andrews, but it's mm -hmm. Axel Turner. Yes. Um, but uh, yes, so more more there with the Romeo and Juliet storyline. Um, we keep seeing clips of Shane trying to spend time with Mitchie, but she's so focused on the schedule and trying to keep the camp together. Um, so we see everyone at night, everyone's kind of finding their groove and having this nice like little moment all around the campfire. Um, uh, Jason's getting picked on by the, the young rockers, the fireflies come out. And I thought this was, this is before, I want to make a point to say, this is before the comp, con, competition to resolve the central problem has been instated. The bad guys, Tess, Luke, and Axel are just in the bushes. Yeah. <laughs> We have no plot yet. They're just looking at them with binoculars. And and Axel says, he says, and I quote, they won't last the summer. <laughs> He's Why? just trying to put them out of business. He's just a, a mean person. A vindictive I, person, I should say. It'd be like if me and Val split up and then we uh, started opposing podcasts that right. recorded on the same Zoom link. Right. <laughs> and one of us was a millionaire and the other one wasn't. And then That's you guys the get difference. to vote for which one of us is the millionaire. <laughs> don't don't manifest that. Don't don't put that into the universe. No, never. My my Literally heart can't never. take it. Can we um, manifest me being a millionaire though? Yeah. Okay, I do like that. I okay. do. Can both of us just be millionaires? <laughs> yeah, actually, and that'd be great. The conflict just doesn't happen. Yeah. Yeah, okay. I love that. Um, so uh, while the, you know everyone's kind of like living their best life, uh, our main characters are kind of huddled together on the porch and everyone's having this nice little moment of being like, oh man, like it sure did stink when, you know, Camp Star did their silly little music number. We didn't even get a chance to like show them what we can do. Could you imagine if it had been like a final jam? And Mitchie was like, guys, what if it was? What if we did that? And they were like, oh, <gasps> That's the best idea ever. And then we transition into the next morning with the famous <laughs> Camp Rock. Um, so Mitchie gets all of our main characters together and they show up in the center of Camp Star and they challenge Tess and Luke and all of Camp Star to a final jam at the end of their camp to say, you all do one big musical number and we'll all do one big musical number and and, and we're, we're going to prove who's the most committed to making the best music and having fun. And Axel and Axel Turner says, hello, 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 wait. I think I think that's this it's a great idea you got there. How about we we loose loosen loosen the pot? What do we say? Sweeten loosen, the pot. Loosen the pot. No, we say how about, <laughs> how about we, we sweeten the pot? Let's loosen that pot. 
<laughs> no, don't do that. And he uh, ups the stakes. He says, okay, sure. Like we'll agree to that, but only if we can do it on live television and everyone around the world gets to vote on who the better performers are. And Mitchie's like, oh, okay, wait, uh, that's probably a bad idea. And all of her friends are saying, no, Mitchie, this is the best idea. And Mitchie goes, okay, I guess this is probably going to be fine. What could possibly go wrong? <laughs> We cut to uh, everything. <laughs> we cut to Uncle Brown talking to Mitchie's mom, and he's like, "I can't believe that she would go behind my back, and that they would that they would do this, that they would talk to Camp Star, and that they would agree to this competition. They're going to completely roast us." And he makes this huge point to say, "I believe in my kids." there's no doubt about that. We have the passion, we have the drive, we have the talent. There's zero doubt there, but they have the funding and the resources. On pure spectacle alone, they're going to make us look silly. Everyone's going to want to go to this camp instead of ours, mm -hmm. which I thought was so silly and so dumb because Camp Rock has been around for years. It sounds like these kids are coming to this camp because their parents went to this camp. Like this has been around forever. So purely based on that merit, I really feel like Uncle Brown shouldn't have as much to worry about as he thinks he does. But here's the thing. He just lost his entire staff to Camp Star. So there's not, That's fair. no foundation. And this is a performing arts camp so like these kids just want to be famous so they're gonna That's go fair. wherever they think is gonna help them get famous like if it was just a camp like the one i went to that's just like for the mm -hmm. sake of going to camp i think sure. you're absolutely correct right but i mm -hmm. think that because there's this element of like i want to i want to be on national television i want to have an agent i want to be famous like i i do think that that like that's why tess went to the other camp right yeah. like it, it's i think it's not unreasonable for him to have that concern no, I think I think you hit the nail on the head, which which begs a larger question. And I think I'm overthinking because we learn in the first movie that this camp is expensive to go to. That's why Mitchie almost wasn't able to go. Mm -hmm. yeah. And all of these kids have super rich, super famous parents. I mean, mm -hmm. Tess's mom has like 85 Grammys or whatever. Yeah. So where is the money going if not to put air conditioning in the cabins? Well, <laughs> here's the thing. Like I just from my own experience my camp please, is please. extremely expensive but it is still very rustic because first of all yeah. the number one expense at any summer camp is insurance because think of how dangerous it is to have kids day and night at a camp doing things like riding behind ski boats climbing rock walls going on zip lines blah 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 right so sure, not sure. only that, but the camp is run by teenagers. So it's just a very dangerous yeah. place. Yeah. So like that alone is a humongous expense, not to mention okay. paying the staff, all the food, maintaining all the facilities. You don't need to have air conditioning. You like, you know, you just need to make sure that there's not like holes in the ground that kids are going to trip in and fall and break their leg. Right. Like it's yeah. it's it's like the money goes so quickly, you would not even believe it. So um, I could totally understand that this camp, while being in a relative sense expensive, it's just running on its normal operational budget. Whereas like this other guy has like infinite funds to do whatever the hell he wants. And he probably just bought a resort and Prob just like, honestly, put, you know what I mean? Like it wasn't yeah. even like he just he didn't build cabins with air conditioning. He just put kids in a hotel. So. <laughs> honestly uh, that coming in clutch with the context foul like I, <laughs> I i never would have like arrived there that's that is that is a very good point yeah anyway okay all right yeah, yeah. Please there we go. <laughs> um <laughs> now that i've been fact checked <laughs> <laughs> ABC um, news. <laughs> <laughs> no it's, it's good it's great um uh. um but yes yeah, so so uncle brown he's very clear that he's not upset with Mitchie and that he does believe in the kids. He's just so like, he's like almost like brokenhearted. He's, he feels so horrible that 
that he tried his best to protect them and they still fell into the blatant trap that he had, that Axel had set for them. So he's like, Ugh, you know, uh, and of course, Mitchy overhears all of this and that's, she just hears the worst part of it is she's like, oh no, like what, what have I done? I've put the camp in danger. If this doesn't work, it's going to be my fault, you know? Um, so I'm kind of glad that they took the, the, um, the I'm not good enough aspect out of it. And it was just purely, none of that matters. This just has to work because if it doesn't, camp's not happening next year. Okay. You know, is there a Camp Rock 3? There's not a Camp no. Rock 3. No. Mm, not yet. Nope. <gasps> oh. <laughs> Zach knows something um, we don't know. You said your I don't. Wait, don't wait, no, no. <laughs> no, 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 no. Don't, don't start that rumor. Don't, don't start that rumor. <laughs> Zach um, Roberts of Walt <laughs> Disney World Company. Don't, don't put that juju on me. <laughs> um, let's see. Uh, so the next day, uh, Mitchy puts out a big announcement and she kind of like refocuses everyone's efforts. It's like, okay, we're focusing everything into this final jam performance. Um, kind of just like glossing over a little bit here. Like we kind of see lots of conversations between um, Mitchy and Shane where Shane's like, I'm just trying to spend time with you. And then she's like, yeah, me too. Except, oh, they really need my help right now. I got to go talk to them. Um, uh, and then there are a couple of uh, scenes where like people are just laughing and they're on break and they're just being kids, like enjoying summer camp like kids do. And Mitchie's like, haha, yeah, that's really funny. Did you hear the one about, you know, the the camp that lost all of its funding because everyone went to Camp Star instead and then camp didn't happen next year? It's hilarious. Um <laughs> So she starts like really cracking down on everybody and camp kind of loses. It's like this sense of fun. And so Brown sees this happening. And so he goes to Shane and he's like, you know what you got to do? I'm sitting there with my juice. Like, what's he, what's he going to do? <laughs> what's, what's he going to do? And then in the next scene, we just see this army of children come storming the next day's meeting with water balloons and super soakers and they kind of just storm what was meant to be a planning session. Uh, and it was meant to kind of distract everybody and be like, hey, like, it doesn't have to be so serious. Like, let's have fun. Um, we cut to Shane and Mitchie um, uh, not long after that. And Mitchie's just trying to dry off her sheet music. And she's like, I'm really busy. I'm working. And Shane's like, OK, but you're going to put that away. And you're going to let me take you on a moonlit picnic. And then she was like, I don't have time for a moonlit picnic, Shane. Can't you see? And then he's like, yeah. I can see exactly what's happening in front of me. See, I could, that could have been the song. Um, <laughs> and uh, they each kind of storm off in their own little direction and they sing a song about how much they really care about each other, but neither one of them can understand how the other one feels right now. When both of them completely understand how the other one feels, I did think it was so funny because um, at one point, Mitchie said, um, like the harder I tight, the holder I hold on, the more he lets go. And I'm like, mama, that's the opposite. Yeah. You're the one letting go right now. So like, I don't know. It was, I loved the song. Yeah, I thought it was a bop. Song, well, yeah. And Val kind of mentioned this too. I'm glad that it didn't turn into a like, like he's not supportive of her like thing where it right. definitely looked like it was going in that direction. I even yeah. wrote that down yeah. and then it flipped yeah. into yeah. like, what do you need? How can I help? Which right. I know we're going to yeah. get to, but I'm glad right. that it wasn't like a, okay, well I'm leaving camp then because you're not paying attention to me. Right. Right. You know, right. Um, it definitely, they faked us out there for a second. Yeah. And I, liked, sure thought. I honestly liked her line of like, you don't know how I function. <laughs> You know, mm. or like, you know, I don't remember what, exactly what it was, but she's like, you don't know that, like, I I'm trying to do this thing. Like, you don't know me well enough yet. And right, he's like, well, right. I'm trying to, but it's like, right. she, this is how she is. And like, yeah, mm -hmm. to support her through everything. I don't know. I, I like. Yeah, it was. A, yeah. I think it was on both sides. It was like a reasonable like you could understand where they were coming from. Ev yes. Everyone had the best of intentions. Mm -hmm. Nobody yeah. was like left field. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, the next morning, Mitchie wakes up to find that Shane woke everyone else up early, which I think is the most unrealistic part of this movie. <laughs> You're telling me a teenage boy woke up extra early to wake everybody else up extra early before the person who was already waking up early Anyway, but surprised Mitchie to be like, hey, look, all of this work has already been done. What else do you need? I'm here to support you. Mm. And she was like, oh, my God, Earl. <laughs> um, <laughs> Earl. <laughs> um, confrontational conversation. 
confrontational, conversational conversation between Dana and Nate. Oh, yeah. This is when she calls him out for not. The juice. Yeah. Oh, about conversations. Yeah. Great. <laughs> uh, so we, so just like how Nate snuck across the lake in a canoe to see Dana, she returns the favor, sneaks across, and Nate is speechless. She's trying to pull things out of him, and he's just like so almost standoffishly quiet. Mm-hmm. And she kind of is like, I don't know what's wrong with me. I just risked my father being so mad at me. I risked, you know, everything about camp star to come over here and try to get to know you better and you won't say two words to me like that's not fair Mm -hmm. so she storms off and she's upset um the next day connie wait yes connie special deliveries a note to shane from mitchie and they finally get some time together including a canoe date scene that recreates the first real time they spent together in the first movie oh. which i thought was really really sweet yeah. yeah um yeah and so like they finally have kind of like that date um and i don't really remember how we transition out of that but i feel like mitchie like has that like i've got an idea yeah probably. thing out of that yeah I can't remember. um Jason gives Shane and Nate the confidence to sing what they want to say instead of just saying it. And Nate does that with Dana, with the, with the Jason Mraz song, which was adorable. Mm -hmm. Um, very sweet. Um, and so he kind of like wins her back over with that. Uh, we cut to Jason with the young rockers and they decide that they're going to sneak into, um, camp star overnight to get an idea of what their final performance looks like. And, uh, they, (laughs) It just cuts to them with the ferns taped to their heads. <laughs> that was so cute. It was so cute. Um, Jason leads the Young Rockers to spy on Camp Star rehearsals. What they don't see is Tess and Luke vying for attention and arguing. Um, I also liked that moment when they were all like, you know, in the Emperor's New Groove, when um, Kronk is like, oh, while yeah. the old couple passes by. <laughs> so Jason does that with the kids in a spotlight (laughs) in a very well-lit area (laughs) that's so um (laughs) mitchie gets an idea from the young rockers when she sees their video recording because at first they come back and they're like oh it's just the two of them singing great all we need is uh, shane and mitchie to sing it can be duet versus duet you two are the strongest singers we have we're good to go and mitchie's like eh, but this is not worth doing if we're not all doing it together uh and she goes and she talks to the young rockers and sees all of the video footage that they recorded this whole time and she gets an idea <laughs> um let's see the competition starts and the viewers are able to text in votes we see a couple of back and forths between the host and brown and axel and the host is like I mean, Camp Star is really good. They're really good. <laughs> um, and she mentions how um, Axel has spent so much money. In again, to your point earlier, Val, like I mean, he just has all of this expendable income to just throw at things. Just on advertising alone, people are getting texts telling them to vote for Camp Star, whether they know about it or not. So yep. random people in the Western Hemisphere are just getting told to vote for this, not knowing what the context is. <laughs> um, so uh, both of our performances happen um, at Camp Star's goes off without a hitch. Uh, but afterwards we kind of see Tess have this kind of like moment of, of regret where she has this uh, bantery moment with Luke where it's like, Oh yeah, this, that song was great. Good job. Uh, would have been better if it had been a solo. And then she's like, yeah, would have been better if it was my solo. <laughs> it's just this funny thing that we do, but then her and Mitchie lock eyes and you see this kind of like moment of understanding. And uh, I don't know, Tess like clearly regrets going to camp star um and then camp rock has their beautiful little performance with all of the footage from everything that they've done over the last however long the camp was Mm -hmm. playing in the background um earlier there was a line that connie had where she said i ordered 500 cans of baked beans and i got 500 beach balls like (laughs) And the 500 beach balls are bouncing around in the audience while everyone's singing. It was just really, really cute and really sweet. Um, And uh, conversation between Axel Turner and Brown about how it doesn't always have to be about the spectacle. Uh, What's the point of the spectacle if there's not the passion? Yes. Uh, And that's why Brown will never make it in this business. And, you know, everyone's holding their breath. Now it's time to announce the winner. (laughs) 
and I thought it was so kind of like grown up for a Disney Channel original movie, honestly, how they handled it, where they don't announce the winner. It's just silence. And you can literally feel the air get sucked out of all of our main characters. And you just see like the devastation on Demi's face. And you just see Megan Martin walk over and put her hand on Demi's shoulder. And I'm just like, and that's, I got emotional. I got emotional the second time. It was like, ah, ah. But so in the aftermath, we see everybody huddled around the campfire and they're all like, this is, this is our last time at Camp Rock. So sad. Uh, but you know what? We did our best and that's what matters. Except slowly but surely, while they're all powwowing around the campfire, more and more people start showing up from Camp Star. And they're all like, hey, is it okay if we come over here and hang out with you guys? Actually, uh, is it okay if instead of going to Camp Star next year, can we come to Camp Rock next year? You guys just looked like you were having so much fun. And everyone was like, (laughs) Uncle Brown just keeps having all these cheeky little like, oh, I'm sure we can work something out. (laughs) (laughs) We'll see what we can do. (laughs) And, uh, you know, the camera like pans back and it's just this like optimistic thing of like, okay, like Camp Rock's going to be fine. And uh, my favorite part about that scene was how, depending on the camera angle, in some of them it was raining and in some of them it was not. Super cool. Camp Rock! Yay! Yay, Zach! Such a good job! Yay! That was great. Yay. Um, Um, I loved, to your point, Zach, I loved um, uh, that they lost. Yeah, loved it. Great. Usurped our expectations. It bothered me at first that it was a little deus ex machina where it was mm. like, we lost. Oh, but everything's it fine anyway. Yeah, yeah. It, didn't, it didn't matter. Like that, I think that's why the first time I watched it, it left a bad taste in my mouth is because mm. I was like, well, then what was the point? Um, but then watching it this second go round, like maybe it was because of the lack of the juice, but <laughs> I, I, I appreciated it more. Yeah. And I was like, all right. One thing about that ending that tied into something that I noticed about the plot overall, and I wanted to wait until now to talk about it, is that I kind of feel like, and again, it's like kind of deep for like a decom, but, you know, most Disney sequels and, you know, I mean, I feel like decom sequels especially are kind of like, ah, we did it to milk the cash cow, right? But I do kind of feel like there was this deeper level of like the what is a happily ever after, right? Mm -hmm. Is like, you know, happily ever after isn't a thing in real life. Mm -hmm. Like, yes, you reach that moment that you wanted to get to, but then like life keeps going, Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. And so like this whole movie is about like, no, you don't get the girl at the end. Mm -hmm. It's about maintaining that relationship and right. building that relationship and so right. there's no perfect happy ending at yes. the end right wow. it never works out the way they expect that's it that's a to. really so, great observation so yeah, yeah i that made me appreciate it more too I love wow it. zach you're so I smart and cute <laughs> <laughs> okay well right. let us let us let us play some Camp Rock 2 Final Jam Bingo. <gasps> oh the bingo <laughs> Zach would you like um, to start? <gasps> sure. Uh, a one-hit wonder song. No, because everyone no. in this movie is famous. Famous. Several hits. <laughs> Several hits at least. <laughs> yeah. mm-hmm. Go ahead, Al. Breaking the fourth wall or looking into the camera. Yes. I did during notice the a musical couple, numbers. At yeah, least. and I yeah. noticed a couple times where like they accidentally <laughs> did it, and I was like, oh, yep, yeah, you just looked directly. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Holiday themed. Not unless you count summer vacation. Not Dang. unless you count summer camp. <laughs> Clunky metaphor. Well, as we were talking, I think that like this is a metaphor for life, right? Like where like one side has the like resources and can just like demolish you and it doesn't matter how much hard work you do. But if you maintain your character and like whatever, then you win even if you don't win. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, yeah. And I like that. And also your point, Zach, about like life keeps going and all of that. I think all of that kind of is is illustrated with using camp as the metaphor. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. I yeah. okay. like that. Thanks. <laughs> uh, parents who just don't get it. Can no. we count Axel? Oh. Oh. Yes. But if. 
if but, he's not the parent of a main character, does that count? Yeah, and but also is he's Dana the villain. kind of a main character? Uh, but can yeah. he be both? No. I think we had okay. this conversation last week or the week before. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, cool non-parent adult. Uncle Brown. Uh, yeah, Uncle Brown. Oh, yeah, Uncle Brown. And D. Duke Some- in another universe. <laughs> in another universe. <laughs> uh, Someone too famous for a TV movie. I would say at this point. I would say the Jonas yeah. Brothers for sure. And yeah. Demi is like right there. Yeah. Competition to resolve the central problem. Uh, oh, yes. yes. Absolutely. Yeah, for sure. Whole point of the movie. The final jam. <laughs> the final jam. A montage sequence. Oh, yes. Several. So many, so many times at camp doing <laughs> camp <Yeah>. things. <laughs> Cliche villains. The rich... Yeah, the rich. Yeah, the rich period. The rich period. Yeah. <laughs> End of sentence. Mm-hmm. <laughs> clothes or items you own? Not really. The only thing I observed about the clothes in this movie is that they're always wearing like jeans and like nice like dresses and stuff. And I'm like, nobody dresses like that at summer camp, especially at camp. Yeah, yeah. they all yeah. would wear it's, like shirts, right? Like t-shirts and shorts. We wore Sophie shorts all the time. That's like that was yeah. like the thing. Yeah. Yeah, several of the plaid button ups I probably would have owned, but I mean, mm. yeah, uh, not, that's not the closest. Specific. Yeah, not yeah. a specific. Yeah, I do own a life vest. Oh, mm. they did wear life vests. Do you want to wear life vests? Yeah, let's count it. Okay, let's count it just to be fun. <laughs> yeah, uh, Rotten Tomatoes 40 to 60 percent. Zach, did you look it up? I have not looked it up. Okay, amazing. You get What's to guess. guess if you get it within five on either side, you get the point. Uh, um, I'm going to say 59. Mm. Val? Al, I, I'm going to go with your, uh, your score. I'm going to say 65. You both get a point. It's 63. <gasps> Whoa! Hey, yeah. Air five. Look at us you go. You guys get points, but we do not. <laughs> That's in the right. bingo square. It's <laughs> too good for us to get a point. Too, it is. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, happily ever after, despite what we just talked about, I do think that they are happily ever after. Yes. Yeah, I would, I would say so. Yeah. Yeah. Almost kissing. Well, there's kissing and Al's theory is that if you have to almost kiss to kiss. In order to kiss. (laughs) That's true. (laughs) You gotta almost. (laughs) Say it, say it. You gotta almost juice to juice. <laughs> there it is. There it is. Uh, someone who became famous. Half the well, guess. Yeah. I mean, they became yeah. more famous than they were. So, yes. Yeah. 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 Famous er. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Betraying of one's real Frankie, friends. Frankie, wait. Frankie, Franklin <laughs> Jonas did get famous after okay. being in this movie. Okay. So, okay. he did. Okay. Okay. Definitely. Okay. 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 Yeah. okay. Betraying of one's real friends or values. Um, no, like Tess, I guess, but I don't know if I count Tess as one of the leads. No. So. Yeah. No, not for this one. Yeah. Your childhood crush. Thanks for saying it, Zach. It sure was. <laughs> Mr. Nicholas. <laughs> he was in my diary. Me- oh. Mijo. <laughs> Obviously bad special effects or stunts. They didn't really have anything except the bus, and the bus actually looked pretty so good. the bus, it was pretty good. <laughs> the only special effect that I noticed that I hated was when she was like, wait, let me see all the footage from your video camera. And you could clearly tell that she had opened the camera and was, like, holding it still. It was, like, a still, and then they just put a black square to play the video on the camera. Mm. I hated that. Oh, I didn't see that. We don't have to count it. No, well, I don't care. We can count yeah, I say count it. <laughs> Disney Channel star. Yes. A lot of them. Mm-hmm. A lot of them. So many. All right. This next one's a little contentious. <laughs> Musical number. <laughs> so many. <laughs> were they good? Not all of them, but no. they were there. They were there. <laughs> I'm going to go back to Disney Channel star really quick, just because I had a thought that I don't know if we mentioned, but Allison Stoner was in Mike's super short show on Disney. Yeah. No, I didn't know that. Have we never mentioned that? I don't no, know. If we never, did last I didn't time know or not. that show. Did we not it mention was, that? It was a commercial show, no. Val, where they would yeah. like interview um, 
they would not like interview, but they would do like movie stuff and like this is coming out. And oh, it's, like, actually, him and his I do remember this. Yeah, 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 yeah that yeah, was yeah. Allison Stoner. Oh, yeah, there you that's go. our show, and now you know because it's Mike's super yeah. short show. Her name is uh, Sally. Super short show. Yeah. Okay, I do remember that. Yep. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. Sorry, I just wanted to say that. No, you're okay. Where are we? <laughs> magic. Magic. No, um, it's me. No, no magic. No magic. Someone says the title of the movie, not the entire thing with the colon. <laughs> no, they say Camp Rock and they say Final Jam, but they don't say oh. Camp Rock to the Final Jam. Correct. And we're sticklers. Sorry. We sh- as we should be. As, as, we, as should we should be. be. Always. I got excited for three seconds. <laughs> yeah. I saw your face. Scooby dude. Yep. Yep. Yep, that final number is a Scooby Doo if I've ever seen it. That's a Scooby Doo. And the Scrub literal and creeping around in the dark is also Scooby Doo. Mm-hmm. The heroes create the problem. No, no. Well, Mitchie accepting the the competition. Yeah, but Camp Star isn't there. No, because she of her. didn't create. No, if anything. Oh, I around. guess you're right. No, no, yeah. that's fair. Yeah, that's fair. Lead is a fish out of water. Not even in the slightest. No, not this time. Yeah. <laughs> no. Uh, well, pals, we got one bingo. Wow. Hey. Our, our second line down. We have cool non-parent adult, someone too famous for a TV movie, competition to resolve central problem, a montage sequence, and cliche villains. Heck yeah. Wow. Heck yeah. We did well, it. because we got one, that means it's time for a game. Yay. Yay. Yay! Right, this is the game of uh, rock and star, rock and star, rock and star. Uh, I'm going to give you the title of a song, and you have to guess whether it is a Demi Lovato song or a Jonas Brothers song. Oh. <laughs> um, and uh, Zach, you will be team rock, and Val, you will be team star. So that's what we yell. That's what you yell to then guess first. Okay. If you Got get it, it wrong, okay. the point goes to the other person. Got it. Okay. Mm-hmm. We have 12 songs. Okay. 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 Right, let's do it. All right. The first song, Hold Up. Uh, I have no idea. <laughs> oh, you're not going to know any of these. These are going to be straight guessing. Okay. Star. Oh, good. Demi <gasps> Val Lovato. Is, Val is correct. <laughs> oh, yay. <laughs> See, that bodes well. <laughs> okay. Here we go. Val got it right. Okay. Uh, second song, Trainwreck. Rock? Okay, Zach. Demi? Correct. Wow. Okay. Yeah. That's like, I, I, I listened to an album. Mm-hmm. Okay. Once. <laughs> Here we go. Third song, Two Worlds Collide. Star? Val? Jonas Brothers? Incorrect. It's Demi. Oh. Point goes to Zach. All right, fourth song, six minutes. Rock. Zach. Jonas Brothers. Correct. Wow. I went into the archives for this. I need everyone to know. <laughs> All right. Uh, I don't know what number we're on. The next song is Please Be Mine. Star, Jonas Brothers. Correct, Bell. All right, next song, Just Friends. Rock. Zach. Demi. Incorrect. Point goes to Val. Uh, ah, beans. <laughs> ah, beans. <laughs> Next song. Until You're Mine. Star. Demi? Correct, Val. <sighs> <laughs> okay. Next song. Catch Me. Star. Rock. <gasps> Zach. Joe. Incorrect. Bros. Point goes oh, to Val. Oh, man. Ooh. I'm my pers- oh. my personal favorite Demi Lovato song. Wow. Mm. All right. I also like how you just said Joe. <laughs> <laughs> Joe. Uh, next song is Hollywood. Star. Rock. <gasps> oh, I heard Zach first. Okay. Is that that's the Jonas Brothers. Correct. Okay. All right. 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 Next song. <laughs> Waiting for you. Star. Jonas Brothers. Incorrect. Point goes to Zach. Hey. All right. Next song. Much better. Rock. Zach. Demi. Incorrect. Point goes to Val. It's the Jonas Brothers. Last song. Hesitate. 
star Jonas Val? Brothers. Correct. Also, my personal favorite Jonas Brothers song. Wow. All right. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Val wins with seven points. Whoa. Only because. Sorry, Zach. I, no, Zach that's okay. Guessed a couple wrong. I would not have won otherwise. <laughs> <laughs> I, I thought I was going to be better at that. <laughs> well, you got five points. That's still good. Crushed it. Yeah, not, nothing to shake a stick at. <laughs> okay. Don't shake your six. Um, <laughs> thank you so much for joining us, Zach. This You're amazing so and wonderful. Yay. Yeah. And thank you for having me. And we will all be in the me. same state this week. And that's very <sighs> exciting. Yay. Yes, we same are. State. Same state. state. Same state. Same state. Florida. Florida. Um, Zach, where can people find you on the internet? Oh my gosh, yes. So we did this last time, and I remember off the top of my head what my Instagram handle is. <laughs> it is... Follow Zach for his one post every four months. It's uh, all lowercase. I don't think that matters on Instagram. Uh, Z-A-C-H-T-R-O-B-E-R-T-S on Instagram. Woo! And and then... Um, and then I've got my Twitch, which is R Y X A C H A Z on Twitch. Um, yep, that's that's it for me. And you can see Zach on my Instagram this weekend as well when I am in Disney World. Yes. <laughs> yeah, do do that. Yes. <laughs> so fun. Amazing. Uh, well, um, Val, what are we watching next? Oh, we are watching Avalon High next. Ooh. Ooh. We're going to King And I'm going to act like we haven't already recorded that episode. (laughs) We're doing things out of order. Out of order. (laughs) Um, Thanks, Val. I love you so much. Love you. Thanks, Zach. Love you so much. (gasps) Thanks, Al. Thanks, Val. I love both of you so, so much. This is so great. We're so glad to be back. Yes. Please have great. have me back again. This doesn't have to be the end. We don't have to wait for Camp Rock. Well, there's 3. no more Camp Rock, so you're done. Bye, Zach. <laughs> oh, what about oh oh but who I'm whooshing. Oh. <laughs> oh no, he bing bonged. <laughs> All right. Well, um, everyone have a great week. Have a great until you hear us next. Happy to be back. Um, and uh okay, tell your mom. <laughs> Bye, Val. Bye, Al. Bye, Zach. Bye, ladies. <laughs> This podcast was produced by me. And me. And it was edited by me. The music was composed by Michael McNally. You can find us online at thetridentnetwork.com slash dcommentaries hyphen pod. And you can find us on Instagram and TikTok at dcommentaries. Dcommentaries is a part of the Trident Network. To learn more about our videos, live shows, and other podcasts, please visit thetridentnetwork.com. Disney Channel Original Movies. Damn it, Allie.